Hello YouTube, it's CM Maritime History here, back in another video, and today I'll be talking about the SS Admiral Nakimov, which is also known as the Soviet Titanic. The SS Admiral no Nakimov, I think I finally actually said that right, was originally built as the SS Berlin, which was constructed by Bremer Vulcan at Wegsack, Germany, Yard 614, and was completed in March of 1925. She was launched on March 25, 1925, and was commissioned on December 17, 1925. Now, as you can see, she was clearly not German when she sank, as you can almost make out the hammer and sickle symbol of the Soviet Union um, on her funnels. The uh, ship was 572 feet long, had four decks, and a volume of 15,286 cruise tons. She originally operated a route from Bremen, then to Southampton, to Cherbourg, and then finally to New York City for the North German Lloyd Line, also known as the Nor Norgister Lloyd Line. That's how I always pronounce it. I'm sure I always get it wrong. But translated to English, that's North German Lloyd. The ship's main route was between Bremer Bremerhaven, Southampton, and New York, which she began on September 26, 1925, and operated until May of 1939, when she was laid up in Bremerhaven for refitting. On November 12, 1928, Berlin rescued the passengers and crew of the liner Vestris, which sank off the coast of Virginia en route from New York City to Barbados. An estimated 113 people died in the sinking. Berlin was chartered by the Nazis in 1939 as part of their Strength Through Joy program, or Kraft Deutsch Fraud KDF. Worker, it was put as a workers' vacation ship, very similar to the Wilhelm Gustloff, which was built by the Nazis. It wasn't built by the... Um, pre-Nazi, um, I don't know, I, I don't think, I think there was a republic, I could be wrong, under, leave it down in the comments if you know, was Germany a republic under President Paul von Hindenburg, uh, before Hitler, but anyway, it was a hospital ship during World War II, Berlin was one of eight ships, eight German ships, commissioned as hospital ships, or lazarette ship, during World War II, most if not all of those ships also served in other capacities during the war after being decommissioned as hospital ships, Mainly as a combination of transport ships and military personnel, all German hospital ships were given alpha alphabetic identifiers, Berlin's being A. On July 16, 1939, B Berlin began a conversion to hospital ship and entered service with the Kriegsmarine as Lazarus Ship A. Sanitat Samd Ost on August 23, 1939. I think that's just Sanitat Samd Ost. I, th I think that's uh, its designation. The ship had berthing for 400 patients, with a crew of 165. Initially serving in Norwegian water, she was identified as field post number 07520. By January 1945, Berlin was assigned to Operation Hannibal, the transport of refugees and soldiers from the Eastern Baltic, same as Wilhelm Gustloff. Just this one survived. On January 31st, 1945, while forming up in convoy to head east, Berlin struck a mine off Swine Monday was put, and was put in tow for Kiel. She then hit another mine and was beached. 23.53 hours of position, 53 degrees, 02.6 uh, seconds north, 14 degrees, 19 seconds east in shallow waters. There was one fatality. All usable equipment was salvaged by February 5, 1945, and the ship was abandoned. She was refloated and salvaged by the Soviets in 1949, four years after the war was over, and renamed Admiral Nak Nakamov after Admiral Pavel Nakamov, a 19th century Russian naval commander, who had a prominent role in the Crimean War. After her um, conversion, her size was increased to 17,053 gross tons. She got her passenger service to the Black Sea Steam Steamship Company in 1957. In 1962, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, the ship was used to transport soldiers to Cuba by the Russians. Um, <clears throat> during the peak summer travel season, Admiral Nakamov operated cruises on the Black Sea between Odessa and Batumi, a six-day round trip. She carried an average of 1,000 people for, per voyage. She was the flagship of the Black Sea passenger fleet for several years until more modern liners entered service. At 10 p.m. Moscow time on August 31, 1986, Admiral Nakamov sailed from Novor Novorossiysk I think that's right, en route to Sochi, its next stop. There were 888 passengers and 346 crew members aboard. Most of the passengers were Ukrainian, with the remainder from Russia, Moldova, and other parts of the then-Soviet Union. The captain of the ship was Vadim Markov. 
Just minutes into the voyage, the ship's pilot noticed that the large bulk carrier, Piotr, or Peter, Vasev, was on a collision course with Admiral Nakamov. Piotr, Piotr Vasev was a Japanese-built 18,604-ton freighter recently acquired by the Soviet Union and was carrying a cargo of oats and barley from Canada. The pilot radioed a warning to P P Piotr Vasev, and the freighter responded, Don't worry, we'll pass clear of each other, we'll take care of everything. Despite the message, Captain Victor Tchekachenko of Piotr Vasev nothing to slow his ship or change course. Convinced that the freighter would pass without incident, Captain Markov of Admiral Nakamov retired to his captain, leaving his second mate Alexander Chudnovsky in command. From 11 p.m., Chudnovsky radioed Piotr Vasev several times, asking about her course and her further actions. Chudnovsky changed the ship's course 10 degrees to the port side. 11.10 p.m., Chudnovsky cried on VD VHF the freighter, immediately reverse full astern. When it was clear that the freighter was headed directly for the ship, Pyotr Vasyov's engines were thrown in reverse. Admiral Nakamov turned hard to port, but it was too late. At 11.12 p.m., two minutes later, Admiral Nak Nakamov was struck by Pyotr Vasyov, eight nautical miles from the port of Novorossiysk and two nautical miles from shore. While many passengers had gone to bed by this time, some were on deck listening and dancing to music. They could only watch helplessly as the freighter rammed into the starboard side of the ship at a speed of about five knots, or 5.8 miles per hour. Admiral Nakamov continued forward the freighter's bow on its side and a 900 square foot hull in the hull between the engine and boiler rooms. Admiral Nakamov immediately took on a list on her starboard side and her lights went out upon impact. After a few seconds, the emergency diesel generator powered on, but the lights went out again two minutes later, plunging the sinking ship in the darkness. People below the decks found themselves lost in the dark and rapidly and rapidly canting hallways, meaning listing. There was absolutely no time to launch the lifeboats. Hundreds of people dived into the oily water, clinging to life jackets, barrels, and pieces of debris. Admiral Nakamov sank in only seven minutes. Rescue ships began arriving just ten minutes after she went down. Piotr Vasa was not badly damaged and assisted in the rescue effort. Sixty-four rescue ships and twenty helicopters rushed, rushed to the scene, and 836 people were pulled from the water. Some people were so slick with fuel oil that they could not keep hold of the hands of their rescuers. Sailors had to jump into the water to save people. Admiral Nakamov lacked proper ventilation, which is the reason all 90 windows and cabins were open during the accident. The bulkheads that would have prevented the ship from sinking were removed during its conversion, and the wreck of the Admiral Nakamov lies on its starboard side in 150 feet of water in Tsemes Bay off Novorosk. I cannot say that right. Novoroskisk. Pyotr Vasa was renamed and operated to other flags until 2012. So, that is the full story of the Admiral Nakamov also known as the Soviet Titanic. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and have a good day. Bye!